Hello everyone, this is Iggy for Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. Welcome back. And today we're going to be talking about German Infantry Series 1 through 5 by Ultimate Soldier. Now, Ultimate Soldier was introduced in 1997. And they initially began producing 1-6 scale figures that featured Vietnam era uh, figures and accessories. And they became uh, so successful at that that they branched out to World War II figures. And then they went from 1-6 scale to 118 and 132. And this we're going to be talking about is the 132. Originally, the figures were released on uh, cards. And they had like a square bubble over the figures. Uh, each one came with six uh, uh, soldiers that like you see here and they released three of them before changing their packaging to these uh, square boxes now these figures that I'm showing you here today I bought all of them at Toys R Us and these particular uh, boxed ones that I'm showing you I bought off of eBay um, the ones that I bought originally in the store. I had taken out the package and they're now in storage. But I wanted to show you the packaged ones instead of the loose ones. Um, they came out first with Americans and Germans and then the line uh, was expanded to include Japanese, British, Russians, and lastly Chinese. Uh, the Chinese ones are probably hard to find because they didn't make many of those before um, the major retailers dropped all the military-themed uh, items. Now, I heard a rumor that uh, a, a advocate group or, a, or somebody claimed that Target was trying to glorify Nazism by featuring these toys. And so they dropped them like a hot potato, which uh, ended the golden age of collecting for people like uh, us. But anyway, now we have to buy it on eBay. But uh, so let's take a look before we get too far into the weeds here. Uh, this one, Series 1, featured a kneeling rifleman. Uh, Let's back up a little bit. The guy tossing a grenade, a man with an MP40. Oh, by the way, the MP40 would have been carried by the squad leader. Uh, it was not as ubiquitous as it would seem when you look at movies where they're all carrying those. Uh, this one is, you know, it's so dark in here, I can't see. Yeah, I think he also has an MP40. Uh, this one is also carrying an MP40, or is he carrying, yeah, an MP40, and here we have an officer pointing, it seems that's what they, they do most, is point. Okay, let's go to the second one in the series. The lighting is kind of wonky here. Uh, I'm filming in the cowboy kitchen and it gets really dark in here. And the lighting reflects really badly off of these plastic uh, packaging here. So I'm going to have to manipulate this a little bit. Uh, this one. Now this guy here, the officer walk. I could swear I know that guy. Or I should say, I know the guy who modeled for that guy. I need to ask Cowboy Carl if that's his brother. I'm pretty sure that's his brother because he worked for Ultimate Soldier at the time this was made. And then we have a sentry standing at a crossroads. He's got the road signs up there. I'm not sure if road signs were reliable during the invasion because didn't they uh, turn them around so that People would get lost and stuff. I don't know. Anyway, this one features the, I call the D-Day camo helmet. Uh, they, they painted them 
like that during the the uh, Allied invasion of France. And I'm going to pick this up so you can look at it. Now this fella has got a, uh, I think, a Walther P-38 pistol. In the movies, they always have a Luger. Uh, the Luger was introduced in 1908 and uh, was replaced, I believe, in 1938 by this pistol here because the... Uh, Luger was expensive to make. It's an, a fine pistol, but very expensive. Very cool looking, too. But The uh, Man From U.N.C.L.E. series, if you're old enough to remember that, they used these guns here for their Man From U.N.C.L.E. guns with all the accessories they put on them, the scope and all that stuff. Those were cool, too. Okay, that's series two. Set that aside. Here's Series 3. Now, they started to get a little more ambitious with Series 3. And they show a Fallschirm Jaeger figure in this one. They, just one, though. And, of course, they have the Normandy paint scheme, camo scheme on their helmets. This fella has got a severe headache. There's Series 3. I should point out, too, that in the boxed sets, they'll feature the figures in the box, which you see here. And then they'll also uh, picture the corresponding American Series set. And in this case, they have a uh, an American... What do they call those? A honey... A Stuart? Is it the British that called it the honey and we called it the Stuart? I don't know. Okay, now let me bring over let me bring over series four. Now with series four we have uh Fallschirm Jaeger, and these are very ambitious figures. They got some really dynamic poses. So as the line uh, expanded, they got more confident in their uh, figures because you can see that they're really dynamic. Okay. And let's show you the last one here, which is the Africa Core. And it shows Rommel in the corner there. Let me see okay, this pesky light reflection. Yeah, let's hold it that way. And this features um, Africa Core figures. But instead of the tropical helmets, which... Uh, they came out with in a later set. Uh, these figures are, are dressed with the, uh, or um, f equipped with the Stahlhelm or with the uh, field cap. The tropical helmets, um, they were used in parade situations uh, when men were in back areas in supply. Uh, when they were off duty and things like that. In fact, I have a picture of a uh, Africa Corps soldier looking rather menacing with his MP40. But that would have not been common in combat. This would have been really inadequate protection in a combat situation. Now, uh, something that's fun about these figures is to see how they compare to... Uh, actual pictures of them and stuff. And I would recommend to you these books by um, Squadron Signal. I don't know if they still make them anymore, to tell you the truth. I bought all these in the 1980s. And they had uh, Africa Corps, Fallschirm Jaeger, 
Panzer Grenadiers, uh, Waffen SS, Waffen SS, uh, German Infantry, and they are illustrated by Ron Volstad. And I noticed that his work gets better as the series progress too. But I like his illustrations. Anyway, that's it. Oh, I should mention that they did have a series six in the uh, in the line, and it came on a, a strip card, three figures per strip, and uh, they came out with uh, I think uh, the Africa Corps figures at that that time, and they also had German infantry and Chinese infantry were released at that time. And then, of course, everything, as all good things do, came to an end. And uh, they stopped making them. Okay, well, that's it for me. I, I didn't have a long video this time. Uh, I hope all of you are doing well. And I'll see you on the next video. I, I'm thinking about doing Forces of Valor Romans next time, but we'll we'll see. Anyway... All of you take care of each other, and uh, I'll see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.